You are tuned in to another edition of Americana Music Profiles, brought to you by Americana Rhythm Music Magazine and AmericanaMusicMagazine.com. I'm your host, Greg Tutwiler. Let's jump right in to the next exciting interview. Becky Bueller told me that it wasn't supposed to take four years to release her latest CD, Crate Paper Heart. The problem was so many other good things were going on in her life. Good things like being the first person ever to win the IBMA instrumental and vocalist categories in the same year, in 2016. That coming off of a 2015 IBMA Songwriter, Emerging Artist, and Recorded Event of the Year Awards. Becky is my guest on this next edition of Americana Music Profiles. Hi, Becky. Welcome to the podcast this afternoon. Hey, Greg. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Good to talk to you. Glad you could join us. Um, you are, uh, and, and I, I didn't write it down, but uh, tell me where you are outside of Nashville. Uh, I remember we were talking about Bonnaroo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm in the home of Bonnaroo, Manchester, Tennessee. It's my yep. husband's hometown. His family's been here since before coffee was a county which is like back in the early 1800s. Wow, okay. and, uh And I I love my adopted hometown. I'm originally from St. James, Minnesota. Oh, okay. But I've been here here in Manchester since we got married, so for the last nine years. Yeah. And it's a great, great place to be. Yeah, that's cool. So tell me tell me about uh, Becky a little bit. How, how did you... Um, how did you get on this career of bluegrass music and, and music in general? Well, my parents met when my mom walked up to my dad sometime during college and told him he was playing cheater chords on the guitar. <laughs> so music has been a part of my life since the very beginning. When I was about five years old, I got interested in bluegrass music. My dad started taking mandolin lessons from a fellow named Dick Kimmel, um, who's, who was up there, a, a transplant from... Pennsylvania and West Virginia came to Minnesota to oh, work wow. for the Minnesota uh-huh. DNR and um, and brought his music with him. Um, but even at that point, Minnesota already had a thriving bluegrass and old-time music community. Hmm. And um, so I, I grew up playing it, went to bluegrass school at East Tennessee State University. Yep, that's and, cool. Um, I picked up the fiddle so I could play in my parents' band. I, I actually hmm. let me rephrase, let me rephrase that. I picked up fiddle so I could sing in my parents' band because they said you have to play something. You can't just sing. Oh, normally, okay. bluegrass music, <laughs> we don't we don't see. I mean, there are exceptions to the rule, but normally you don't see somebody just singing. You, you, usually, everybody does everything, a little right. bit of everything, sure. plays everything, sings everything, yeah. drives the bus and record the record and do the graphic design, all of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just the economics of bluegrass sure. music. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and um, so, uh, so I, yeah, that's, that's how a bit, the only instrument they didn't have in the band was a fiddle. I wasn't aware of dobro at that point. Oh, uh, so okay. It might have changed, <laughs> yeah. changed my path if I was. But, yeah, so I picked up fiddle. And and, um, and then, yeah, I went to bluegrass school, took a job with Valerie Smith and Liberty Pike immediately out of school. Oh, that's and, cool, yeah. And then... Uh, Traveled all over the world for ten years with her, and then, um, and uh, then traveled with Darren and Brooke Aldridge for a couple seasons. And since 2015, I've had my own outfit. So the Becky Buller Band. Yeah. So music has kind of been your thing that you've done uh, professionally, right? For for most of your your life since school. It is. Yeah, and I've you know worked odd jobs, you know, within the industry to keep doing this, <laughs> you know, mostly teaching. I do a lot of teaching and have since college, I uh, teach private instrumental music, mostly fiddle and violin, uh-huh. um, some songwriting and some singing and claw hammer banjo and um, worked for Valerie Smith's label, Bell Buckle Records in their uh-huh. office doing various things for a while. My degree is actually in public relations. Oh, cool. So, okay. I figured that was something that would help me within the music industry. Sure, yeah. So in and around the music for sure. And you mentioned teaching. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I'm presuming that you have a, a, a set of students that you work with on a regular basis? I do. I, I need to count up how many. I, I think I have about 25 to 30 oh, wow. students right. um, that, are, that are active that either – 
you know, come, some come once a, a week, some come every couple weeks or once a month, some every so often, but they're still consistent with me. Um, and and I, I have a lot of local students here in Manchester, Tennessee, and, and Middle Tennessee, but then I have folks that study with me online from, let's say I had one in the UK here recently. Oh, nice. Um, that's my, my farthest flung. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the, just this week I had a, someone sign on from Durango, Colorado, and I had a Pennsylvania student right after her. I've got a fellow up in Boston that's studying with me. and um, So it's, it's, it's really fun, and, um, and, and I, I, I really do enjoy it, and especially when a, it really clicks with a student. They just fall in love with it. So um, you do this do it. <laughs> by, via Facebook or some sort of live uh, one-on-one uh, FaceTime or something like that? I do yeah. uh, FaceTime, but mostly Skype. Okay, is how I've been doing that, and that's all on my website at beckybowler dot com. Neat. Um, okay. All my lesson policies and whatnot. I teach a couple days a week because that seems to make the most sense to, with um, touring and and then also being a mom. We have a, a five year old daughter named Romy, and she's a, a whole lot of fun. And yeah, we're exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And and you're also uh, a songwriter too, right? That, that's that, oh, yeah. like a like a, a big thing for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not just for Lots yourself, of, um, but for other folks too, correct? Yeah. Well, for a long time, I was just you know performing as a as a side person, working for Valerie mostly, and um, didn't have my own band, didn't record too many records. I'm like, I had a couple couple records, one that came out while I was in college called Rest My Weary Feet, and then one that came out on Valerie's label in 2004 called Little Bird. But mm-hmm. then I had about a 10-year gap because it, you know, it just wasn't easy for me to get in the studio or fund a project, and mm-hmm. um, it just, the timing wasn't right. And so, so you know, I was writing lots of songs, and, and, I, and I always have squirreled away songs that I particularly like thinking, well, maybe someday I'll get to do another right, record. Yeah. But then other songs, I'm like, you know, that would fit a certain artist or I'll, I'll write with a certain artist ah, in mind okay. um, or go write with them. Um, so, yeah, so I'm all the time pitching things around and, um, and Bluegrass has been very kind to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, I'm amazed. I'm continually amazed that I get to do this and at the folks that have recorded my songs. Yeah. I mean, there's no greater uh, honor than when an artist likes what you do so well that they make it part oh, of I imagine, their art. Oh, sure, yeah. I, it, I'm, I'm always intrigued when, when I talk to people who are who are also uh, intentionally songwriters and, and the question of writing for your band, your music, versus, uh, you know, another artist out there that you write for them in mind when you write how tell me if if you can explain it what what the difference is <laughs> what kind of mindset that you have to get in in order to write for you know a, a, an artist uh that that maybe asks you to write for them or you you decide that you think you have a song that would fit that person versus a song that yeah. you may write for yourself that you know that you want to perform with your band yeah well i don't necessarily set out saying I'm going to write for myself today. I'm, I'm very much an, an inspiration writer. I've, usually it's a, a phrase that catches my ear, and then I'll I'll just start kind of singing, speaking that, and that will kind of lead itself to a rhythm, and that rhythm will kind of lead itself to a melody, and then that melody will kind of lead itself to a, a form, and the, the song just kind of grows from that and and sometimes it'll be from a gal's perspective sometimes it'll be from a guy's perspective Mm -hmm. um i'll just try to follow the idea wherever it goes and you know sometimes it goes nowhere (laughs) (laughs) and uh um but i you know i I love i I love listening and and there are artists that i've just you know grown up listening to and and immerse myself in their music and and so you know, naturally some things will come out of my music that reflects what they do. And, and for instance, I'm like Kenny and Amanda Smith, I just love their music. Yeah. And, and, um, I, I've written, they've recorded a few songs of mine, which is just, that just tickles me to death. Yeah, that they would do neat. that. Um, and, and 
and and I've written some other ones that I've pitched their way, thinking, you know, that I can just hear them singing this, and okay. you know, it just depends on where an artist is at, of course, and um, and some things I've pitched two or three times, and they've gotten picked up by that artist, and and sometimes they keep saying no, or or I don't hear anything. There's a lot of not hearing anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, this was great. So um, so oh man, I in the early early 2000s, I wrote a song with um, Mark Simons and Lisa Ashman called Music to My Ears. And Valerie Smith ended up recording it, but I didn't realize that Mark had also pitched it to Ricky Skaggs. And maybe he had uh. told me, I don't know, but in 2012, I got a text from my friend and co-writer John Weisberger, and he said, congratulations on your Ricky Skaggs cut. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and he said, yeah, didn't you know you got the title cut of Ricky's latest album? Oh, wow. And That's it cool. Was, I was just like taken aback, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I still get goosebumps thinking about it because I'm just such a fan of Ricky Skaggs. Yeah, yeah, so honored that he would have chosen that song, but sure. he had had it for ten years, and he kept trying to, you know, fit it onto one of his records, and you know, it finally fit that collection that year. And yeah, and uh, it was just. Oh, pretty awesome! I hope I answered your question. I no, feel like I yeah, talked all around it. No, no, no. That's neat because it, it uh, you know, I've learned over the years that everybody's songwriting process is different. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there's some core things that run through all of them, but um, it's always interesting because I, I hear from folks sometimes that you know, well, I'm not really that much of a songwriter. We we rely on other folks writing songs for us, and then somebody yeah. like yourself who's writing songs for a lot of people, whether they you know intentionally or they get picked up and. Um, it's always interesting to hear the difference and the the different nuances mm-hmm. that lead you to be able to do that or or, or f- <laughs> allow you to find yourself in a place where other artists are singing your songs to the point that you also won an award for that, right? An IBM award? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, in 2015. Yeah. Uh, from the International Bluegrass Music Association. Yeah. It's, wow, it just blows my mind. I I still can't get my head wrapped around all that. So, well, not, not only did will. you, and that you, might not be a bad thing. Yeah, no, that's that, that, no. Any time an industry <laughs> that you respect acknowledges your contribution, it, it's cool. And and uh, you were also, I think, nominated as uh, or maybe won the award for emerging artist that year too, right? I did that year? Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. And and then of course the next year was the big year where you kind of kind of made history with the IBMA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The 2016. Um, uh, seven player of the year, first female to ever win that award, and um, and then also the one female vocalist that year, and yep. the first person to ever win in both vocal and instrumental categories ever. Yeah, that's in the awesome. history of the awards. Yeah, and uh, again, I just, <laughs> I just I keep thinking about that, going, what? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that's so. awesome when that can happen. And, and I, you know, I'm sure it has yeah. to give you a boost of confidence and, and being able to go forth and, and uh, continue to do what you love to do, obviously. Do, do you find yeah. uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the uh, attention level of, you know, hey, uh, we want you to write a song for us kind of stemming from, from uh, that acknowledgement? I don't, I maybe maybe a little bit. I it's it's kind of carried on like with with pitching songs and stuff. That's kind of carried on pretty steady, about the same pace I think. And I'm so slow at getting back. I've got so many things on my plate. Yeah. And, um, um, it's it's hard to keep track of everything. But um, but yes, definitely the um the stakes are higher, and and I think more so than the boost of confidence. It's it's kind of I mean to be gut level honest and completely transparent <laughs> it's um it's freaked me out um i'm huh. used to being a support person and i drug my feet on having my own band for a very long time ah, okay um just 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 because i i knew it was going to be stressful and um i didn't know that i had what it took to make it happen and luckily hmm. i have a wonderful team uh, around me with the musicians that i get to perform with and hopefully we'll talk about them in a little bit um for sure but yeah. but also just with with uh, our, our our booking agent and, and my record producer it's just a, a great group of folks that make it not too stressful on me you know um make it make it easy on me but but yeah i find myself now trying to live up to those awards and, and play up to those awards and i 
I feel <laughs> which is totally backwards and ridiculous. You never know how you're going to react to something until right. it happens. Right. Um, and, and it was something that I hadn't 